hello everybody. It is so good to be back with you. I'm Amy Scrivanis and I lead our women's ministry here at Fellowship. Um, and I, I was gonna share with y'all tonight about my wardrobe malfunctions, but I don't really have to tell you about it. I can just show you. This is what happens to me every time I try to get up and do something. So y'all are gonna have a lot of entertainment. Last year, I busted my zipper. And so there was a time I was teaching and I just had to kind of be like, <laughs> I'm not gonna raise my arms. And um, let's see, last week, I had a hole in the back of my jeans, white jeans, purple underwear. Good job. Um, let's see, for the Razorback game, I decided I should put on some self-tanner and then I should wear white shorts. Anybody know what happens if you do that? <laughs> You sweat, and then you look like you've had an accident. Not a good plan. So anyway, um, yes, I just spilled water all over myself. Well, you guys, I am so excited to be back together for our women's Bible study. And I just want to know real quick, raise your hand if you were with us last year. Okay, about half of you. So then raise your hand if you were not, if this is your first time. Yeah, so... I love seeing that, you guys. We have gone from seven groups to 10. And um, it's just so exciting because I know a lot of you are here because somebody invited you. Or maybe you're new to fellowship or you heard about us in the community. And we are so glad you're here. We know we have a lot of churches represented and just women from all walks. And it's just a joy to get to be able to be together. So I want to introduce our team really quick to you, just to kind of help you know who we are. First of all, I'm, we're going to put a picture up. This is our staff team here. So I lead women's for our campuses. So we at Fellowship have six campuses, and I oversee this women's Bible study and our ministries across the campuses. And Carrie Carter, who is in the orange, I guess we'll call that, Carrie's in the back of the room. Carrie, you want to wave to everybody? There's Carrie. Carrie's amazing. Carrie is our West Little Rock women's pastor. So Carrie oversees everything that's happening here on this campus. Um, I still do this one because it is the all-campus study, but we work really closely together on everything. Um, Carrie's most heavily involved in Bloom, which is our ministry for young moms for marriage and parenting. Um, just a great job there. And then in the blue, we have Emily Schaefer. You probably saw Emily outside tonight. If anything runs smoothly around here, it's because of Emily. So you might not see her up front, but you are seeing her in all the details. She is incredible. She's the one that pointed out my purple underwear situation. So I cannot survive without Emily. <laughs> um, okay, so next I want to introduce you to our teaching team. And if you were here last year, you'll recognize these faces. This is in the middle, we have Rebecca Price. And then to the left is Trisha Schmidt and then myself. And this was us just last year at Rebecca's 40th birthday party. We were celebrating. And so um, I love our teaching team. We have so much fun just preparing for you guys and working on these lessons together. And I think you'll enjoy the fact that we're all very different teachers. So if you don't like listening to me, don't worry. Next week you get somebody different, okay? So it'll be good. All right, so we had our leader training, as I said, uh, last week. And one of the things that we did was an icebreaker. Uh, Rhea Fix, who is one of our leaders, does this kind of for her business, she, um, or for her work, I should say. So she's really skilled at icebreakers. And one of the things that she had us do was just share three things that we did this summer as a way to kind of get to know each other. And some of y'all may be doing this in your groups later, so you might... Start thinking about that in case your leaders do that. But I thought I would do that with you guys just as a way for y'all to kind of get to know me a little bit. So the first thing I did this summer, and probably the biggest thing I did this summer, was my oldest daughter got married. And so I've got a picture of our family now. Um, so in the middle is my oldest daughter, Sydney, and her new husband, J.D. Oliver. And we really love J.D. He's so sweet. And he adds some height to our family, which is amazing. We, we're happy about that. Um, and so um, on the other side of Sydney is my husband, Marty. Marty is a counselor, has his own practice here, and he's great. Um, and then Sophie is our middle daughter, and um, Sophie is a sophomore at the U of A. And then our son, Will, is on the other end, and Will is 
a junior in high school. And so he's my only one home, so life is just pretty easy right now. Um, he's pretty laid back like his dad. So um, we did that, and then after the wedding, my husband and I had our own getaway to Colorado while Sydney and her husband were on their honeymoon. We had our own getaway. And so if you guys are in that stage where you have people getting married, I highly recommend it. It took me that full, full week just to get adjusted to the fact that I'm now a mother-in-law. And so just being able to process our new family and be excited about everything was really fun. And then the third thing I did this summer, I played a lot of pickleball. Does anybody play pickleball? I know Sally does. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So I played a lot of pickleball. In fact, we even taped off a pickleball court in our driveway because we wanted to play more. So it's fun. Okay, well, that's a little bit about me, and I hope you all have fun getting to know each other in your groups tonight, too. That's really what tonight is, is just getting to know your groups. Um, some of you know each other, some of you don't. Some of your groups are going to be super big, and that's because people just kept signing up, and we love that. But you guys may end up deciding, y'all could have some discussion about if you need to be two groups or even have two tables when it comes time for discussion so that you stay one group, but each week you kind of break up a little smaller for discussion. I'll let y'all work that out in your groups and your leaders will lead you through that. Um, okay, so our book for this semester. Um, will someone hold up the book? Yes, right here, Mary's holding it up. If you do not have your book yet, the book is In His Image by Jen Wilkin. You can order it, um, and I would say go ahead and get that so you can read the first chapter for next week. Um, I think it's just going to be great. Um, and then if you guys miss a week, we, have, we record this every week. So if you have to miss a week, you can find the recording and get caught up. And so we're going to put that up on the screen. We've got our podcast. If you are one that likes to just listen to it as you're driving or whatever, um, we also have our YouTube channel. And you can also find it on our website. If you go to fellowshipar.com slash women and you scroll to the bottom, you can find all of these recordings. Um, also, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. I'm terrible at social media, so I rarely post anything. But maybe somebody will figure this out soon and we'll be more active on there. Um, we could use some help in our tech booth each week. So if you would be willing to volunteer just even every other week, it's super simple. You're literally pushing a button. Um, it helps us to be able to insert these slides into the recording so when people are watching it at home, they're able to see those slides as they go. But it's too much for one person to manage all that. So if you guys feel like you could handle that and would be willing to help with that, find me afterwards and I'll get your info and we'll get you on a little rotation there. Um, let's see, what other announcements? Uh, we have an emergency response mobile pack coming up on October 5th. There's two shifts available. You guys cannot do the 7 to 9 shift because you're here. <laughs> but if you would like to do this mobile pack, that 4 to 6 p.m. shift you could do before Bible study that night. I do know the slots are filling up, so if you're interested, go ahead and get signed up. These um, meal, Have you all done these meal packings before where, where we pack the meals? This is going specifically to um, help people from Ukraine who need these meals right now. And so um, I'd encourage you guys to be a part of that. We'll be bringing things like this to you guys throughout the semester just so you're aware of opportunities to serve. And we'll look for opportunities where we can do that together, but also where you can do that yourselves. All right, so a little bit about what to expect in here. First of all, if you look around the room, you will see that we are groups of all ages and life stages, and we do that on purpose. We really want your groups to be mixed in a way that you are learning from people from all stages of life. And we got such good feedback on this last year that that was one of the things people most enjoyed about this study was being able to be around a table with women from all walks of life and really get perspective on things. And so... We stuck with that, and we're super excited about that. Um, and, you know, this is a place where we just all want to come together and encourage each other, no matter where we are in this journey. So I want to encourage you all to come as you are. If you've been working out and you don't have time to go home and get looking cute, do not worry about it. I'm always going to be a mess, so it's fine. Um, 
but, and if you're coming straight from work, that's great. Just however you need to come, just come. We've got the cafe is open every week at 530, and they serve a home-cooked meal, and it's $5. I mean, you cannot get that good of a meal anywhere for that price. And so I would encourage you guys, use that time. Come get dinner, decompress from your day, enjoy catching up with someone in your group or someone, um, even if you've got kids you're bringing, you can have dinner with them out there before you drop them in childcare. But just want y'all to know that's available as well. Um, and it's never too late to invite a friend. I know I said our groups are getting bigger and full, but we are not full ever. We always have room for more people and we will figure it out. We'll multiply our groups however we need to, but we want you to continue to include women, invite women. Think about the women that are in your life that could use a community like this. Because I know that for a lot of us, this has been just a great place for us to connect. And even just kind of midweek to just stop in our week, connect with other women and focus on God's word has been just really good. Um, we are super laid back, but we do wanna encourage you to commit to this time. It's really important that you commit to this time not just for yourself, but for the women in your group. Um, when we're consistent here, we build relationships. It helps us grow together. So one of the things I'd recommend doing is just going ahead and marking it on your calendar. Look at other things you have scheduled and do your best to be able to work it out that you can make this a priority. So we've got a great semester planned for you. And um, what I'd love for us to do right now is just to take a minute um, I'm going to give you maybe two or three minutes, and I would love for you just to think about and pray about what God has for you this semester. So we're going to just kind of ask some questions. Um, ask God, what do you want for me in women's Bible study this year? What do you want to teach me through your word? And how do you want me to encourage others this year? And you've got room on the back of your handout if you want to just write some things down, but we're just going to give you a few minutes just We'll turn on some music and just give you a few minutes to think about that and pray about that as we prepare for this year. Father, we just thank you so much for this time together. We thank you that we can just stop in our week and just have this time with other women that we can connect with one another around your word. God, we thank you that your word is living and active. And Lord, that you are at work changing our hearts and our lives. And God, we just thank you for that. I pray that you would 
guide us in our time tonight. And Lord, just um, help us to focus on you. Help us to remove distractions from our minds and just to focus on you. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, there's a lot of good reasons that we do Bible study. And God uses this time when we're gathered. He uses this to strengthen and encourage us. He uses this to teach us about himself and to help us to learn how to follow Jesus in our daily lives. As we're talking about that with one another and working those things out. But there's one verse that's been on my heart this summer, and I just wanted to share this with you guys. Um, Deuteronomy 29.29 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. I just love that verse. That's a verse that I came across this summer. Um, and just thinking about how amazing that is. If you think about who God is and how big and great. And he, we cannot fully know him and his ways. But how amazing that he has revealed himself to us in his work. That is absolutely incredible. And so I want us to just think about that. That this is why we study the Bible. It's so that we can know him, not just to know about him, but so that we can know him as he's revealed himself to us in scripture. And that is a beautiful gift, and it's something I really don't want us to take for granted, because I think a lot of times we can, and we need to stop and just realize, we, this Bible that we have is God's word to us. So my prayer is this semester that we will all grow in our awe of who God is, and in our desire to just read his word and to know him um, and that, that we would just recognize that his word is living and active and that he is at work changing lives. So over these next 10 weeks, we're going to be looking at 10 characteristics of God. Our book is titled, In His Image, 10 Ways God Calls Us to Reflect His Character. And in the introduction to our book, Jen Wilkin proposes that maybe we're asking the wrong question. Have you ever been faced with a decision and you just couldn't decide what to do? Maybe it was a job opportunity or a move to another location or where to send your kids to school. Some sort of decision. And you prayed about it. You did your research. You asked questions. You talked to people that you trust. And you just still weren't sure. You wanted to do whatever was God's will for you, but it just wasn't clear what that was. Have you all ever been in that situation? Jen suggests that there's a better question that we need to ask. She says that for the believer wanting to know God's will for her life, the first question to pose is not what should I do, but who should I be? And these questions, they're not unrelated. But as Jen says, the order in which we ask them matters. If we focus on our actions and we, we don't focus on our hearts, she says, we may end up merely as better behaved lovers of self. So let's look at these two questions. What should I do? When, we, when we're posed with that question, the answer can go in a million directions, right? And often it's determined by some combination of logic, values, desires, feelings. We may pray about it. We may even have a, a clear sense of where we think God's leading in it, right? But if we're honest, we recognize that it's hard. It's hard to discern with clarity God's will in this way. Because our own emotions sway our hearts, our own desires. And, and they confuse our minds, right? And then there's this question, what, who should I be? When we start with who should I be, we align our hearts with God's will, which is clearly spelled out in Scripture. God's will is for us to be conformed to the image of Christ. Let me say that again. God's will for your life and my life is that we be transformed, we be conformed so that our lives reflect the image of Christ. This is what he wants for our life. And so there's no confusion here. Remember in Genesis 1.26, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. 
we were created in the image of God. He created us to perfectly reflect his glory. But we know we don't perfectly reflect his glory, right? Romans 3.23 tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So we bear his image, but not in the perfect way that he originally designed for us to. But because of Christ, we can reflect God's glory. And so God's will is for us to be conformed to the image of Christ. Colossians 1.5 tells us that he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And Hebrews 1.3 tells us that Christ is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. This is why he's the only one who can make a way for us to be reconciled to God. Because Jesus is the perfect image bearer. He alone was qualified to pay the penalty for our sins on the cross. And Rebecca's going to talk more about that next week when we talk about God's holiness. That's going to be our first one. Way to start with a really big one. And so um, we're going to talk about God's holiness. But here's my point. Through Christ, God has made a way for us to be remade into his image. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, it's, it says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. We are being remade in his image. And Colossians 3 tells us that we're to put off the old self and put on the new self. And look at this phrase closely. Which is being renewed in knowledge after its creator. Remade in his image. That's what we're going to be looking at is this knowledge of our creator. And as we're learning about who God is and encountering him in his word, he transforms us into more of his likeness. So how is it that we're transformed in the image of Christ? Well, we begin by trusting God for our righteousness and renewing our minds with the knowledge of who he is. Ephesians 4, 23 and 24 says that we're to be renewed in the spirit of our minds and we are to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So what does this look like? When we talk about reflecting the image of God, what exactly are we talking about? Let's talk about this for a minute. There was a handout that I gave you guys as you walked in. It's the blue one. And on one side, you'll see the communicable attributes of God. And on the other side, the incommunicable attributes of God. The communicable attributes of God is what we're studying this semester. These are God's traits that can, can become true of us. And so we've got some descriptions there of each, each of those, and every one of those are what we're going to walk through this semester. And then on the other side of the sheet, we have the incommunicable attributes. These are God's traits that are true of him alone. These are the ones that when we try to be these, we're trying to be God. And that's, that's not what we're supposed to do, Okay. We want to focus on those communicable attributes. Those are the ones that we are called to reflect. So as we go through this semester, we're going to be following a pattern each week. We're going to be defining what this trait is. So next week we'll define holiness. And then we're going to be asking the question and answering, how is God holy? How does scripture tell us that God is holy? How does scripture describe God? And then what does it mean for us to be holy? What does it mean for us to reflect his holiness? And then finally, and this is just boiling it down to make it really practical for us, how does this knowledge that God is holy impact the way I relate to him, first of all, and change the way I live? So how is it changing my relationships with people around me and the actions in my life? And so we'll be, we'll be asking those questions, we'll be, as we're teaching, we'll be teaching to answer those and to talk through those and help us think through those together. So I want us to look for just a minute at your notebook. Everybody got a notebook this year. I'm super excited about the notebooks because I like keeping all my stuff in one place. And I felt like last year all my handouts were just like folded in a book somewhere and then they'd end up in the bottom of my bag. And so we're hole punching them. You can slide them in, organize it however you want to, whatever makes sense to you. 
add things in there, however you want. Um, but in your notebook, you will notice that um, at the very beginning, we have for you a um, schedule. <coughs> Excuse me. And the schedule, if I can find mine, has, um, well, I'll just remember. The schedule has every week and what chapter we will be studying for that week. So for next week, you'll read chapter one. And I want to encourage you to start with the verses. So turn in your book to the end of chapter one where the questions are. <coughs> At the end of chapter one, <coughs> so sorry, y'all. At the end of chapter one, you'll see when uh, right before the questions, there's a section that says verses for meditation. I want to encourage you to start with that before you even read the chapter. Start by looking up these verses and writing them out. <coughs> so sorry, my throat is dry. Um, we've given you a place to do that. You'll see in there in your notebook, you'll see a spot that um, if you go past the calendars, each week you'll see that we have, so it'll say God is holy and it'll say verses for meditation. That's your place to write out those verses. The reason why we encourage you to write those out first is so that you actually have time to think about them and meditate on them during the week. If you wait and do that very last, which I know from experience that lots of times I wait till the very last. Oh, I have Bible study tonight. I'm going to read my chapter, get that thing done so I can act like I'm on top of it here and I'm not. So write those verses. When you go home tonight, write those verses. Or first thing tomorrow, write those verses. That way you can look at them throughout the week. You might want to pull that sheet out and tape it to your mirror and just read it every morning. But give the Lord time to work on just getting those verses in your heart and, and giving you time to think about them. And then read your chapter. And then there's just like four questions. There's not very many questions each week. We purposefully keep this study manageable for you. We know that we have busy women who are working and have a lot going on. And so we keep it where it's going to be manageable, but deep and, and really get you in the word. That's our goal. And so we want to encourage you to do that. In just a minute, we're going to have our small group time. And as we do, I'm going to give you a few ground rules. Oh, one more thing before I go back. After the verses, if you go to the next page, there's a place there where you can just take notes. So you might be reading during the week and, and you just think, okay, I just read this. I have a question about this I'd love to ask in my group. Or, wow, I thought that was a really good point. It made me think about this. Use that section just to kind of take some notes because if you're like me, I might read it and then the next day I can't remember what exactly I even read. So um, take some notes to remind yourself, that sort of thing. And then at the end, you'll see each week, the end of the chapter in the book has a, a prompt for you to pray. And so we've given you space in your notebook to write out that prayer. Um, so I'd encourage you just to utilize your notebook. It's there to help you with your lesson. Okay, ground rules. And um, I don't like rules, but um, like I always told my kids, the rules aren't to, to keep you from having fun. They're to keep you, to keep you out of trouble so you can have fun. So we're going to keep us out of trouble so we can have fun. Um, so our ground rules, be concise. Our groups, because they are large, if one person talks for 20 minutes, well, that's about taking up your time. And so we want to be concise with our answers. We want to share, but, but just be aware that other people probably have things they'd like to share too. Um, keep sharing confidential. We want this to be a place where we can be real and honest with each other. And, but it's gotta, we've got to feel safe with the people in our group. So keep sharing confidential. Rely on scripture for truth. Okay, rely on scripture for truth, not just I think, whatever, but what does scripture say? And then we're not here to be each other's counselors necessarily. So, so if someone's sharing about something, it's not your job to, to help them fix that. And um, if someone's in a situation where they do need more help or counseling, let me know. You guys let me know because we've got some great care pastors here. And we have great pastors on our staff that would love to come alongside you in that. But here we want to be focused on studying the word and encouraging each other in the word. And then finally, avoid divisive topics. What might some of these be? Well, politics. Let's, let's avoid that. 
other churches, okay? We love other churches. We are for each other, and so we don't want to ever be critical. Um, personal choices, like vaccinations. Hopefully that's not still such an issue, but it has been. Personal business promotion. We just want to keep this time focused on God's word. So just think about that. Think about the things that we're discussing and we're looking for unity around the scripture with one another. What's going to build up the other people who are sitting around the table with you? What's going to help them leave the most encouraged in God's word? Because I know for me, I look forward to this night. It's kind of that midweek time where it just kind of gives me that boost for the rest of my week. Because I've come and just been here with you guys. So we want to have that. Okay, I want to close by reading these five prayers from the Bible Recap. Um, how many of you are familiar with Terry Lee Cobble Bible Recap? Okay, it's a reading plan that's on like the Version app. And at the beginning, it's where you read through the Bible in a year. She's great, has a podcast that goes along with it. Really good, highly recommend it. But she has five prayers that she encourages you to read or to pray every day before you read. And so I just want to pray these over us for our semester. And then I'm going to let you guys have your small group time. We're here till 8. Your, your leaders will dismiss you at 8. If they don't, just go. I mean, if you need to go, go. It's fine. <laughs> and if you want to stay and visit, stay and visit. That's great. But I don't want anyone to feel like, because lots of times we're women and we get chatty and we want to hang out and talk forever, but we got to go and it's okay. You can go. Um, okay, so let me pray for us. God, I just pray that you would give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Secondly, let any knowledge we gain serve to help us love you and others more and not puff us up. God, help us to see something new about you we've never seen before. God, correct any lies we believe about you or anything we misunderstand. And finally, God, would you direct our steps according to your word. Amen. All right, enjoy your small group time.